senior country man manager for the International Finance Corporation, Kyle Kelhofer, has criticized governments, previous and current governments of Ghana, for what he terms as the lack of adequate investments in industrialization and manufacturing. This, he says, is affecting uh, economic growth. He has been speaking with my colleague, James Ishen. Um, I spent the last 11 years managing IFC's operations, first in Bangladesh for four years, and then Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos for seven years. And so it's delighted to come back. Um, but the experience in those countries was profound to see how manufacturing and manufacturing-led exports has provided stability to the economy, growth to the economy, more and better jobs, particularly better jobs for women. Okay, and and large scale scale of exports. So, for instance, like in Bangladesh, ninety five percent of the exports are apparel. Okay, and yet you've seen the GDP per capita grown to where it's now higher than India. Okay, and same thing in Vietnam, where they've grown up value chain of of export led manufacturing growth. Um, and just created more and better jobs. In Bangladesh, they started out, some Koreans came and established a few companies and for the first 10, 15 years with primarily Korean companies. But then the Bangladesh, Bangladesh companies learned how to do this. They were supplying, then they eventually started their own manufacturing companies. Currently in Vietnam, I would say 95% of the companies are still foreign owned, for instance. But the jobs and the better jobs are for the Vietnamese. What can we do as a country, basically? Because it's it's a conversation that we keep having there every day, but yet it appears we're still where we are. What can we learn from this as a country? I actually think, and I compare it to when I lived here 10 and 15 years ago, Ghana actually is in a position now to replicate some of these successes in East Asia. Because you do have a track record of stability, that it is a safe and stable environment, that there is reliable power supply, there is reliable water, there are efficient world-class ports here. There is proximity to markets to Europe, the US. There are things like AGOA. There's a very well-trained workforce, but also now is very competitively priced compared to wage differentials in Asia. So there's a business case that maybe didn't exist 10, 15 years ago that does exist. And, and, and sadly, and there is unfortunately some devaluations taking place, but every time there's devaluation, these industries are that much more competitive. So we can say we are now on track. I think I think we're on track, and we're seeing more start up. We have, we have GTRTs coming. We have tile manufacturers. We have some furniture manufacturers. So we're seeing these starting to take place, and let's see how it transpires over the coming years. They, they're starting off well. They're they're meeting efficiency measures on that can be compared to Asia. Um, they're having brand access to these markets. They're training up these workforce, primarily women, providing a safe, stable working environment. Um, so let, let, let's see, but I think, I think we're on track. How is the manufacturing investment in this part of our world like? Historically, it hasn't been as big as say as compared to, to Asia, okay? That it's been much more primary commodity services and agriculture. Um, but I do think there's this opportunity and we're seeing more interest um, from international players, whether it's from South Asia, whether it's from East Asia, whether it's from Latin America, to think about building facilities here.